Become part of the change towards a regenerative future. Our aim is to promote self-empowerment and educate our course participants about regeneration so that people all over the world can redesign their communities. Look deeper inside our programs and courses to find your way within your community to transform the world. Sustainability is at the heart of all of our courses and projects. Sustainability design education is our mission. Join our programs, support us, and let's fly together. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Gaia Education webinar series. My name's Jane, Jane Rasbash, and I've been involved with Gaia Education for many years. And I'm very inspired for this very special webinar tonight where we're going to present uh, my friend Walid's short film called Sea of Hope, which is about the journey of a refugee father and his son across the sea. And this will be followed by a panel discussion on arts and activism and human search and rescue. So the webinar will be streamed live on um, Facebook and YouTube, and it will be recorded and made available on the Gaia Education social media channels. Sea of Hope may not be on that actual recording, but if you're interested to access to see the film, you can get in touch with us. Um, the microphone and video will be turned off during the webinar, but you are invited to post questions during the chat in the chat box, and we'll come to the um, discussion at the end. So I'd like to introduce Walid. Hello, Walid. Um, he's an award-winning filmmaker and lecturer in content creation at Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh. And I was lucky enough to be a student of Walid's a few years ago when I learned a little bit about filmmaking. And today we're going to show this premiere of his short hand-drawn animation film, Sea of Hope. And it tells the story of a Middle Eastern refugee father and his son that are undertaking a really dangerous sea journey, trying to escape a war-torn country. And the film aims to highlight the fears and um, the perils that refugees take to have a chance of just a semi-normal life that most of us take for granted. And the film will be followed by the panel discussion. And in the panel, we have, um, as well as Walid, Pedro will join us. And Pedro, as, as many of you know, is co-CEO of Gaia Education with Sally Bagali, and he's been in. He's also been very active in human search and rescue efforts, efforts in Lesbos, which is a destination for many of these migrant boats. And he's actually um, coming into us tonight from Palestine, where he's doing some activist work as well. And I also have a, an amazing guest who I'm going to call Lara. We can't show her on screen because it's uh, for security reasons. Um, and 100 Projectors is a peaceful protest initiative for Myanmar democracy. Myanmar is Burma, um, where they have a very violent military dictatorship. And brave creatives in Myanmar use video productions, um, in projections in public, uh, public places to show pro-democracy messages. So I'd just like to say, I'd like to invite our team to just get prepared to show the Sea of Hope. And as we're waiting for that, I'd just like us all to pause for a moment and take a deep breath and just know there's so many people suffering around the world. There's so many people in conflict areas, often that we don't know anything about if they're not reported in the media or anything like that. And let's just open our hearts and minds to this one story that we are about to see. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you enjoy Walid's beautiful film.
I, I need to go back in. Still can't. Am I in now? Yeah. Now I can hear. Okay. So thank you, Walid. That was so beautiful to see. Um, just invite everyone to just hold the space for all the people suffering that have had journeys like the one that was shown in the film. And I'd like to ask you, Walid, what inspired you to make this film? Yeah, uh, I mean, I come from uh, uh, Lebanon. Uh, I come from a city called Tripoli, which is uh, known for being the poorest city in the Mediterranean. Uh, Lebanon as a country at the moment uh, has a population of 3 million people. Yeah. And has, I think, at most estimated between 1 million and 2 million Syrian refugees. Plus, there's 1 million Palestinian refugees. And recently, the whole economical system collapsed. So, from the city of Tripoli, you've got lots of uh, refugees leave that city trying to, because Cyprus is down the road, Turkey is up down the road. So a lot of people chance to take their chances and take those boats from that city. And uh, I know a lot of local stories. I actually know personally a lot of people who actually lost their lives uh, and children. I, I, I've got lots of stories. Uh, so kind of I felt, I don't know, as a filmmaker, I have to do something, you know. And I was conflicted about making anything because people think you might be benefiting from a situation as an artist making a film. So I was all the time conflicted with it. Um, but I felt that at the end of the day, I didn't care, I have to do something. And I ended up making this film, you know. Uh, yeah, so the journey of making the film is quite a long journey as well. Uh, because, did you ask that question? <laughs> no, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the journey of making that film, because I came, I came up with the idea after watching a Pixar movie. And uh, but it was about nothing, and I thought, uh, well, I want to apply it to something that means something to people. Uh, and then, yeah, but it was involved a child with a, his spare father on a boat, and, for, and, and I don't have any budget. How am I going to get a boat and I read a child and put a child on the boat with the father? And the, so I thought, mm, the, I thought that I thought the easiest way is animation, but it wasn't. <laughs> So I didn't know animation, so I had to go and learn animation. And uh, then they just two of us worked on the film, myself and uh, the artist, Christina Messina, which is, she was going to be with us, but she can't. She's actually on a train journey at the moment. Uh, so yeah, so and that's how we developed it and we done it. Uh, the idea of it was not to be political, just to create some emotion. You know, it's not about, uh, it's this. plus it's kind of another thing as well. It's because those sometimes people are, they, for, they forget that those things are happening all the time. The media doesn't report it all the time. It's happening all the time. And mm -hmm. if we make a lot of stuff like this as artists, we remind the people that this is still happening. I mean, so that's the kind of the ideas behind it. Thank you. I just want to say there's a there's some lovely comments, Waleed. People are thanking you for showing such a powerful movie. Um, and Pupak, who I know, Pupak has connection with Iran. She's asking, why did you call this Sea of Hope? And she said, is this what happened to you? But I think we understand it's not what happened to you, but happened to friends of yours. I mean, I was a refugee in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, the refugee situation. Uh, can I say something like that? Uh, is it okay? Yeah. It's not like just happening. In the, in the, it's been happening for a long time. I mean, third, uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, 1900, early 1900s, a third of the Lebanese population died of hunger. Mm. You know, just before the First World War. Uh, a lot of Lebanese people left on boats, similar boats. They ended up in Brazil and Africa. A lot of Lebanese immigrant, immigrants in, in Brazil and Africa are just left due to hunger. That's 1900, and it's still happening today. And it's not like something new is happening in the world. It's happening all over the place. And 
it's like but people sometimes i feel that it's just a new thing we're getting no it's not it's like something's been going on for years and i think Pupak said, why do you, did you call it Sea of Hope? Yeah, sorry, yeah. It had such a uh, sad ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, the whole ending is, I changed it so many times. I had a good ending, bad ending, because it took five years to do, and the news was coming out, and things were happening, so I kept changing the ending. Uh, but the, sea, uh, the idea of it is, when people leave their homes, they have nothing in this life. Mm. They have nothing. Mm. They see this sea as a hope. This is yeah. the only hope they've got, is the sea. They can see the sea, and you know, the other side of the sea could be something good for them. The other thing as well, those people, like uh, here in the West, we look forward to holidays. We look forward to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a job. I'm going to have maybe increase in my salary. I'm going to have a promotion. Those people have nothing to look forward to. They look forward to paradise. They look forward to life after death. So to them, Either dying is a positive because their life is like hell. So the kind of things I was playing with those kind of ideas because they're true. And I know lots of people, they take their children and put them on boats. People think they don't care about their children. Of course they care about their children. But their reality is so bad that they're willing to take those risks, those risks with their families. So the kind of uh, irony is your hope. It's, but those people, it's their death, but it's their hope as well. Thank you. And can I ask um, Pedro and Laura, what are your first reactions to the film? Mm. If, if I can start, yeah. It's, um, you know, the film, I think it tells the story of a lot of people in, uh, in, it looks like a story of one child, but it's not. It tells the story of a lot of different people because you can mirror little seconds, little pairs of seconds in the in the film with the stories of a lot of people. And this is what I realized. And I was thinking that the sounds, I was thinking that these two seconds could belong to that person's life, these other two seconds to other. And yeah, it's it's really powerful because of that, in my opinion that you can mirror a lot of people in the film. Um, and it's a reality that in Europe, like what it said, it's not anymore in the news. And it's so important that we could show these little bits in, in the form of a film or of a, any art expression, for example because it's not anymore on the news. And I remember when I went to Lesbos, it was because I saw in the news, you know, I couldn't stand being at home and seeing that at the news. But now when I look at someone that had my age, like seven years ago or six years ago, uh, I'm not sure why, how they will get this news, you know, how, how do they will get informed, how they will get uh, this idea that stuff in our homes is not okay because people are dying at our doors. So, and I think this is why it's important to have this art expressions, these films, this, and all of this, this story being told, you know, Charlotte just, just, just posted on the chat, the names of at least the ones that we know of people that die since European union was founded. And it's, it's a huge number. It's uh, 48, thousand people since 93 from the master's treaty that people died and if you go to that list and you see is not we are not talking about people from syria or afghanistan we are talking about people from all over the world you know that are trying to reach the hope that is european union you know so we have this dichotomy that this european union was founded and a lot of people want to come they see the hope but then they die at the doors of the European Union. And this is, I don't know how to say this. It's like, it really needs to be that bad at home for people to, to cross the ocean. You know, it needs to be that bad at home. So we could explore more. I will give, give, give some space for the others, but it's like just one thing that we keep coming 
at least on the politicians level, coming to this difference between economic refugees and uh, and refugees or economic migrants and refugees. And I think we are just hiding the problem, you know, we are just avoiding talking about this. And this is very, very important that we, we, we start really talking about this problem. Yeah. Thanks, Pedro. And Lara, would you like to say something about your first uh, impressions? Yeah, like, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful thing. Uh, you know, like, I'm also what as a filmmaker, you know, like, because of what's happening in Myanmar, like, there's a lot of conflict. So like, I, I was so confused, you know, which role, you know, I should take, you know, as a filmmaker or as a protest or as an activist or, you know, it's confusing because of like this kind of, uh, I felt like, oh, there's not the right time, you know, to call out the story because so I'm not sure is this affected or not. But by looking at, uh, by being the, like, a, like this screening and conversation, you know, that's how I can carry uh, how this play and, you know, like, this can carry our conversation. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Also, like uh, my first impression is like, uh, how can we balance this war? You know, like, you know, like not we we don't need to go anywhere. Like uh, to 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 stay at you know where we are. You know, how can we balance all this suffering? Yeah, that's what I am thinking now, because I really. You know, I myself really don't want to go anywhere. You know, I just would like to be where I am. So, but, but like, uh, you know, like if we have to leave one day, you know, if we cannot stay, you know, so, but we don't want to leave. So, yeah, that's my, I think no one would like to leave. No one would like to leave like that. You know, we, we would like to stay. We would like to stay at where we belong. But, uh, you know, we, we cannot do that. So. Yeah, that's what I my first impression. Thank you. And and Pedro, maybe you can say how does the film relate to what you've seen in Lesbos? I know you've been out on the search and rescue boats and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so in Europe we have two realities. We have the Central Mediterranean reality and we have the less the Greek island reality. The Greek island we are talking about 11 kilometers more or less in some place way less that people crossing dinghies. And when I saw the, the vessel that they were crossing in the, in the film, the first thing that came to my mind is that those are the dangerous ones, you know, because we start making a ranking on the dinghies and vessels that people try to cross, like these are more dangerous than the others. And because it's like, it has like a cabin that if turns around, people get close inside. And this happened a lot either in the central Mediterranean and, and as in Lesbos, that uh, the, the, the dinghies and the boats that people are crossing were so precarious that they could not last the entire journey. And uh, you can see when the sea is rough and you can, you can almost start feeling what might have been the feeling of the people of insecureness that when they are in the dinghy and that's, yeah, that's very scary, you know, it's like <laughs> when every, every time we saw like a dinghy coming to a shore or we were in the ocean and we saw, it's like, it's a miracle, you know, every time it's like a miracle because how do they survive to get here? You know, even if it is the six, seven, eight, eleven 11 kilometers in Lesbos or the way lot miles in in central mediterranean almost to lampedusa from libya to lampedusa it's every single time that we found a little dinghy it's a miracle because it was overcrowded people were people were sometimes for days in the ocean and uh, with children with pregnant women with elders also and sometimes it's like we don't think about these things but it's like Sometimes it's even people with disabilities also. That how is this possible that these people manage to survive these very harsh conditions? And uh, I think, uh, yeah, it, 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 it kind of uh, reflects all of that. And it's in, there are minor details. What comes to my mind is that there are always minor details that we never see. 
And uh, I guess for Walid, and he can tell better about this, maybe it's very difficult to show all of these minor details that make this journey difficult in a, in a film or in a art expression. But uh, is this minor things that we keep thinking that people surviving is actually a miracle, you know? And the proof of resilience also, that is also a very mm -hmm. important part because, yeah, there is also a lot of resilience from these people. Thank you. There's one comment from Eva that says only stories have the power to teach us empathy for each other. And I think, Walid, you said something about the emotional impact of, of this. Could you say something about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this I mean, that's the kind of thing I wouldn't want to create something that blames this person or this government or something. I just want to create something that creates an emotion that kind of uh, that makes people see like sometimes you're preaching to the converted. I don't want to preach to the converted. We already, I want to reach those people who don't kind of think like we do. People think, I want to convert the people who think, oh, those immigrants shouldn't be here and stuff like this. This is the people I want to reach. I want to make them feel what those people feel. So this film is, I didn't make it for, I mean, we're sharing it in this media and I think most of the people watching this agree with this point. But my point of the film wasn't for those people. My point of the film was to reach, that's why I entered in a lot of festivals and stuff, a lot of screenings. So I hope in that person who doesn't think about those issues, because my film wasn't just screened with films about refugees. It was screened with normal other films. Mm -hmm. So someone sitting in the audience is yeah. not there to watch film about refugees. Then you touch them in a certain way. And those are the people I wanted to reach through the film. Uh, yeah, the other thing I would, I'd like uh, to go back to a point uh, Pedro said about politics, politicizing something. See, at the moment, uh, there's another side to the refugee issue, which is, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not an expert in refugees, you know, I just, this is my opinion. Uh, the refugees are using, are being used as pawns in political games. Like Turkey uses them, Syria uses them. The refugees in Lebanon, it's like they left there, and okay, the United Nations gives them some money to live every week. And now Lebanese government uses them, it creates hatred against them. And then Syria uses them and said, if you want, if you want, if you don't do this for me, I'll leave the refugees in Lebanon. Uh, and uh, Turkey does the same thing, threatens Europe. So they become a power. Like a, they're not any more refugees, they're just a game the politicians are playing with them, which is really disgusting in a way. That they take I mean, they've done that to the Palestinians for years. They put them in, yeah. in camps and use them. Uh, the Arabs or the Israelis use them as kind of uh, just a power game, but they're human beings, and then and they don't want to be there to be used in this way. Mm -hmm. I just thought another angle on the, mm -hmm. on the issue that I'll mention as well. Thank you, Ali. I think now I'd like to show a little clip about some of the work that Lara has been doing in. Um, in Myanmar, um, can you prepare to show that? And then, Lara, you can um, maybe just say something about how you're using video for nonviolent protest in Myanmar. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, I missed the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, like 
Yeah, that was the time, you know, when we, we still can do the peacefully protest. So that's so important. Uh, like when in 2021, when we have a coup, so a lot of people participate in the peaceful protest with the, you know, like different kind of the way. So like we, I was a, a visual artist and filmmaker. And so we don't know like how to use our talent, you know, during this peaceful protest. So and then we discuss with our friend, okay, let's do some video click. Then we, we, will, we will start a projection. So the, the, uh, my, our intention is we would like to do the peaceful protest 24 hour. We would like to do some the distraction. We would like to distract to the uh, military government. So that is how uh, we started. So we, we did the, uh, we started with the five day campaign, but uh, that campaign was successful. So that's why we extend, you know, okay, let's do more. So we invite all the international uh, uh, people, you know, like if you would like to do the projection, you know, we can provide the video yeah. file so the people can come and get the video uh, uh, video file on the our Telegram. So that is how, you know, we start the peaceful protest, not only in Myanmar, but also in our neighborhood country. Uh, so at the time, you know, yeah. Uh, on the Facebook, Facebook is one of the very powerful places, you know, you can get all the information. So we collect all the information, which are very important for now. So we edit during the daytime, then we upload a video file on the uh, Telegram channel at the nighttime. So people can, can get the video file and then they start doing the projection. So that is how we started. Uh, yeah, because of we use the video file, so people, uh, it can travel very easily. You know, is it just one file? So that is also one of the, we learned from that, one of the powerful, you know, like how people can participate, you know, from the, whatever you are, like, like you will see in the video, you know, like there's a, almost 10 different countries, they project at the same time, or they are doing, being the part of this project, yes. Yeah. And uh, now the political way is totally changed. So like, we cannot do that. So if you are not in the liberated area or if you are not in a safe space, so we, uh, we, we can do projection now. So that is very sad, you know, how, how we lost. Now we totally lost. At that time, you know, we felt like, oh, we lost. We lost. That's why we would like to take it back that, you know, that space. That's why, you know, we, 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 we did that projection. We would like to. Uh, get back our speed, but now totally lost. Yeah. So it's not possible now to show the videos, Lara. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It would you'd yeah. get arrested or yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, yeah. it's it's not just not not only arrested. It's very much depend on you know the situation how you get arrested. You know, it's life threatening. It's become life threatening. You know, yeah. Oh. But if you can. If you are in the liberated area, if you still can do that projection, it's me. You are in the liberated area. That is yeah. also how you know you can you can project where you are now. So for example, you know if I go if I have a chance to do this projection in the middle Myanmar now, where is there where is there somehow is somehow slowly become liberated area, so you can do that. You know that's also interesting. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. So now I'd like to ask a question to Lara and Walid. Maybe um, maybe start with with Lara. What do you hope to achieve with the film and content that you've created? And I heard Lara say that it's difficult to use now because of the security issues. So what are your hopes and dreams for this kind of um, creation of videos for social change? you know, now in your current situation? Mm. So, but uh, we cannot do the projection, projection in Myanmar, but we still can do in the outside of the, outside of the country. Yeah, that's the one thing. But because of our political situation, political way is changing very fast, you know, very, you know, like, so we cannot, uh, we cannot catch up like before. So, uh, our strategy is changed now. So I'm trying to produce a, a film. So that's where we I can show in the film festival. So 
we are changing the approach you know yeah. we are not doing any more about this video clip but we are highly produce uh, flame yeah so that is how we can create we, we, we will get a space to speed up what is happening yes like well like <laughs> yeah well let us know if we can help you with that and yeah. and we'll lead what do you hope to achieve? You've touched a little bit on this, but maybe go a bit deeper with the film and content that you're creating, like the, this Sea of Hope. Yeah, what, I mean, I was a refugee myself. Been? I was a refugee myself in the 70s, and uh, I was a refugee in Iraq. Uh, and then I came to Scotland uh, uh, in the late 70s. And the first thing I, well, I was a kind of a young, very young, uh, and I felt there was a kind of lack of understanding of my culture. And I would go and tell people, people, I come from Lebanon, and people say to me, oh, it's a desert. <laughs> I said, no, no, Lebanon is not a desert. It's a beautiful place. We've got mountains, we've got this, we've got that. And then people just kept thinking, I have camels in the desert in Lebanon. And I thought, my, and then I, I, at that time, I wasn't a filmmaker, I was just a young person. And then when I became a filmmaker, I started making films like everyone else. But then I thought, I, I want to make films that bridge cultures that, introduces my culture. I live in the UK, I live in Scotland. A lot of people here not know nothing about my culture. And you look at Islam, I'm not Muslim, but it's not part of my culture. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mixed person. But uh, I wanna, but they have the wrong, uh, the, wrong, the wrong understanding of my culture. So I want to, my films, I'll try to bridge that gap, try to educate the people in the world. So my films are directed towards people in the West. So I have an mm -hmm. audience, I know exactly who my audience is. Yeah. And it's very important for an artist or a filmmaker to know exactly, understand his audience and target his work towards the audience. And my audience are people in the West. I wanna tell them, look, my culture is not just camels and sand. We have this, we have that, and introduce them to characters of my culture. That, and the, the things we do, a lot of good things here, we're not just immigrants and you can use us in elections you know, and put out posters, immigrants are coming here to take jobs. We're not like that. So my films are tr are this kind of things, trying to bridge a gap between my culture and the West, or the, where I live. Yeah, this is one, and then sometimes when things big happen, I, I can get influenced, I'd like that Sea of Hope. It's about something, and if something's happening at the moment. So this is the kind of motivation behind my film work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Pedro, do you want to say anything about I, how this kind of film, you know, this kind of video, how it could be used in the context of the work that you're doing, how it could be useful? Yeah, I just want to say one thing that is, it's amazing how, how humans, how, how we, we can say we can do resistance with the in a very different, in a lot of different ways. In the past few weeks, I saw resistance by planting a tree. I saw resistance in the Neko village and now through hearts, through this amazing idea of just projecting, not just, but uh, yeah, it looks very simple, but projecting this message, these videos, this uh, that can become life threatening, you know? And this is what most inspires people I think is the way of, that we are doing resistance is so different and so diverse that there is always a lot to learn you know from this amazing video from Walid from people in Palestine here that are planting a tree as a way to resist as a way to become more resilient as a way to still living in their indigenous place it it's amazing I think in the last two weeks I saw like 30 different ways of resisting oppression you know and uh, it's not we are not talking about uh, you know it's like it's it's a very it's always very holistic you know it's with the environment it's with the animals it's with uh, creativity with arts with our culture with our identity and uh, yeah this diversity of resistance it really surprised me in the last few weeks you know and even now coming here to see these two new ways, yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm astonished by it. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Thanks, Pedro. And just to remind people, Pedro is now in Palestine. So I think you're talking about things you're seeing in Palestine. Yeah, that I yeah. saw. I see one comment here from Gordon. Can we dare to dream for a life where no one is left behind to suffer alone? Is that too much to ask or expect from one another? Or are we all drowning in an ocean of fear of each other? I don't know if any of you would like to comment on that powerful statement. I mean, I think I think my duty as a human being and my duty as a filmmaker and artist is to bridge gaps. And I think the more we understand each other, I think the better it becomes for us as individuals. But we always have the problems of politicians and governments and mm. and this is the use us and I, th I think i believe i don't know this is my opinion we need a new political system this political system up at the moment doesn't work mm. where, where i elected a, a politician and he lies to me he says i'm going to do this this and this and he does nothing you know he's being paid off by, by some corporation and then and i think this i i, I mean okay democracy is a great system but we need to improve it and i think this is the way forward we have to improve the system we have it doesn't work anymore and the proof for it is everywhere as you can see it with the refugees coming you see i mean we really can look at asia you can look at middle east you can it doesn't work it only works for the few people in the west the rest of the world is this doesn't work i think the future we have to kind of hear people ask like us in the west live here we have to work towards a new, we have to improve our political system that makes our our politicians more accountable. They're not accountable mm -hmm. at the moment. They just do what they like. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I went on a rant there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Pedro, Alara, would you like to say anything, particularly relating to this point of dreaming? You don't know, like it. Yeah, I like it. I like the all on, you know, like, uh, how much we are willing to know each other. Uh, if, if we, we, we need to, like, how much we are willing to know the situation, you know, is it? Then we know, if we know each other, we can, we, we can, you know, we can dare to dream, you know, why not? It's, it's, but the only problem is like, you know, I come from the Myanmar, so where the, where the, like, a very diverse place, with the full of the program, so it's very obviously there's a lot of block, you know, there's a lot of block, you know, like we we, we cannot reach each other because of a religious, because of politics, because of your ethnic, because of your identity. So like it's made block, you know. We cannot see each other being who we really are, you know. Uh if we you know like we only need to see who we really are, you know, like it's not because of the our identity or it's not because of with, you know like what the politician created you know within us you know like so i think it is somehow we can connect each other but, but it takes time and also we need to we need to have a willingness you know to know you know if if, if we, we don't want to know we don't know you know if we are if we would like to know we know so that's this you know i think yeah, thank you. And I think that film and that and um, the the creative endeavors that you're embarking on is trying to bridge these gaps between the different ethnicities, between, as Walid said, the West, you know, his culture and the West. And if this is a way we can reach out something between different diversities, whatever they are, this is something positive that will reduce the ocean of fear. I'd like to ask. What advice, I mean, this is for Pedro and, and, sorry, for Walid and Lara again. What advice would you give to creatives who are trying to portray complex social issues? Should I go first? Yeah, please. Okay. I mean, I went through this myself, and uh, it's quite a very difficult question to answer because I say first, know what message you want to say and make it as simple as possible, yeah? And then I think, be careful, be careful because uh, make sure your message comes from you to the people. It's not being kind of 
hijacked by funding or anything like this. Mm. And know that your craft and work with a lot of people, help each other, support each other with the work. And I think, yeah, I mean, uh, I would say from technical point of view, just keep it simple, keep your message simple. Simple message, like one a picture says a thousand words. You know, don't complicate it. Uh, yeah, that's this kind of thing I would say. Uh, plus, yeah, as I said, have a pure message from you, honest message to the, what were you trying to do. And Lara? Yeah, I agree with him. <laughs> yeah, be authentic, you know, like uh, uh, where, where, where we are now, you know. We cannot be, I, I don't know, like it. That, that's what I'm struggling now, you know, because of, I'm in the very deep, very complex, and I don't know sometimes, you know, like what's happening. But stay, you know, we, we would like to do something. Stay, we would like to produce something. You know, stay, we would like to do it. But I already trying to be uh, authentic, and I already show, you know, where I am now. You know, I, I don't want to show because, like uh, where I'm not. You know, like like it's me. Uh, not because of, uh, I don't want to show where, you know, I don't understand, you know, like at first I'm trying to digest myself, you know, like it's, it's go through, through me. So first, you know, I learn open and then like all the pain, all the suffering, you know, all the joy, all the wisdom, you know, I, I learn from myself, then I produce it, you know, so that is where I am now. So, uh -huh. so people, people will, you know, people will know it. Yeah. Uh, can I say one more thing? Sorry. Sure. Yes. Uh, I think it's our kind of duty as artists or filmmakers to reflect our environment, to reflect our reality, to reflect our beliefs, our, what we think. When we see injustice, it's our duty to highlight it. And uh, otherwise, I think that's what art's meant to be. You know? Uh, so, yeah. So, I think an artist should try and reflect what they think. I mean, I don't know everything. I, I can just, I might do something now. In five years, I look back at what I did. I don't agree with that point anymore, but at, at least at that point in time, yeah, I was being honest with myself. I seen mm -hmm. injustice, I highlighted it. Yeah, and this is, I think every person, not just an artist, has, should be doing this. Thank you. Pedro, is there anything you'd like to say about how you feel this kind of um, creative filmmaking can play out in, you know, relating to social justice and whether there's anything that we at Gaia Education can to do, do to support this? Yeah. Um, one thing I, I want to say is that I admire artists very well because I'm the worst creative person in the world. <laughs> so when I see creativity emerging from, from people like I would get enthusiastic from it. And one thing that I would like to say to the global north, let's say like this, artists that want to do something, is not to talk to me or to other people <laughs> that were to, in this place, is actually to go there and to learn from the people that are suffering learning from the people that are doing resistance. This is the first thing, because, for example, I remember when I went and then I came back to Portugal, a lot of people, oh, I want to do a, a play about this. And they came to talk to me. And then it was me talk, telling other people's stories. And I think we lose a lot when we are telling the story on the third person. You know, we really need to start bringing this mentality and I guess gay education, going to your question, plays a role here about bringing this mentality to, to at least Europeans, to the global North people, that is, don't to try to, to sell other people's problems in a way that you are always talking about them in the third person. So let's bring the voices that needs to be bring. And this is what I think it's lacking, that we ignore the actual voices of the people that are suffering or people that really know the problem. So this is my biggest thing. And I think high education, especially with the worldview dimension that we have in our curriculum and uh, 
it plays a very important role in that way, you know, like this is not uh, us fixing other people's problems. This is like Lara said, working, like we need to work in this global community, but also localizing so we can have as much diversity as we as we need to have. So I think this is important for us to do. And having these thoughts in our mind, at least in Europe, I think it's very important. Otherwise, we will never be able to produce real art and to relate to to the people that are having problems. Yeah. Can I say? Can I add some more just on the point as well? I agree totally with this statement, and I think uh, art doesn't just help, doesn't just inform the people. It helps the artists themselves. It helped me. Because I used to think, why do people here think of my country like this? But making these things help me to adjust as well. And I think people like, you know, uh, refugees, people need to hear their stories. Yeah. They should be allowed to tell their story. I mean, I know it's like a relief. It's, and people, when I came first to this country, nobody wanted to hear my story. No mm. one was interested. And I, th I thought when I arrived here as a refugee, People are waiting for me to hear my story that I suffered and they want to give shame or lead and stuff like this. But it was the opposite. No one wants to hear my story. Mm. And I think art helps, the, not just helps education, it helps that person to tell their story. And I think it's important for people to tell their stories and know that they're being heard. Yeah. yeah. Lara? Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree with that. You know, like that's what I. Uh, you know, be, to be hard, you know, like that, that feeling is me a lot, you know, even though, you know, sometimes we, we, we are not asking help, you know, we are not asking uh, anything, but the feeling, you know, the emotional support uh, where we get from, like being hard, you know, but of course, you know, there's a lot of suffering around the world, you know, but, but some, you know, we, we need, we need a space, we need a, we need a space, you know, where we can camp and then we can speak. That's why, you know, like country like Myanmar, maybe there's a lot of country like our country. So uh, when, when we use the art, you know, like it's one of the tools that is kind of the healing, you know. It's one of the one of the channels that we would like to express, you know, our all the suffering or, you know, something like that. So you, you will see, you know, some of the performance art in, in our country very aggressive, you know, very expressive, you know, like this is a kind of uh, one of the you know, app, you know, people are trying to heal, you know, yeah. So I think that's how we can help each other, you know, even though uh, we can have each other as a solidarity, you know, like being hard, you know, the feeling of heart, yeah. So what I'm hearing is that the the process of telling stories is a healing process for the artists. So it's related to inner work as well as, mm -hmm. as telling the stories and being heard is something that can share and so that people can understand these stories where they maybe wouldn't have accepted them in another form as well lead found. And I think this really does link into the worldview, uh, Pedro, because it's about the inner work and the outer work linking together and then having an influence in a bigger picture in the you know in, in in our international communities so I think it's really really powerful work and I hope it's something that Gaia Education can I don't know for, follow up on and develop and maybe have some kind of network of people telling these amazing stories I you know that's something I would love to see yeah yeah can I add one more thing also I keep uh, I think yeah it's so important it's a healing thing telling your story especially and it's very educational for the person listening to the stories to the story if it comes from the actual person themselves uh, I, I know like uh, in Finland they have in the libraries instead of hiring a book you can actually sit down with a refugee and listen to the story and I think it's such a I, I, if you can do something like that here in Edinburgh for example yeah. it's like it's like and the, the first thing is those people are dying to tell what happened to them. And then at the same time, educational to the person listening to it. Sorry, that's me. No, that's really interesting because it's like, even in some of our courses, that maybe we could link people together to tell each other their stories. It's, it, there's lots of possibilities there. And um, 
it's really igniting something, I think. It's igniting something in me anyway that's really powerful for social change. So would any of you like to make some final comments? I think we were going to We have been talking, sorry, we have been talking so long to do a podcast in Gaia Education. Maybe this could be a podcast, right? Yeah. About the stories, like 20 <laughs> minutes, 30 minutes. Mm, yeah. That someone come and talks about these stories. It's very easy to do. And we have been talking for so long to do a podcast. Maybe that's the idea. <laughs> And I know that, you know, I, I, I said to you you guys earlier, but just to tell the audience that that Don Bosco, who's one of our partner organizations that Guy Education works with in Sicily, and they host the migrants that come off the boats um, and help them integrate. And I, I heard some of their stories when I was there about, well, it was just over a year ago, really, really, really powerful stories. And I think these really need to be heard and, you know, and I'm sure there's lots of other partners and people around the world that in the Gaia education networks that we could link with. And I'd really love to see this happen. Yeah. So any final words from anyone? Maybe we just go around once and say something just to complete the, the, the webinar. You want to go first? Sorry. Thank. Uh, I would like to thank you all for watching my film and enjoyed watching the projection film. It's an amazing way of uh, resistance. And uh, thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak. And uh, that's all I could say. <laughs> thank you, Ali. Uh, thank you as well. You know, I really like you know like how we met each other through the art form. So, and then, you know, it's remind me, you know, why I am doing what I am doing. <laughs> so, you know, like sometimes I, I feel like a little bit confused, you know, which role I should take, you know, because of everything is so messy and, you know, I don't know uh, which role is uh, suitable for the now, you know, it's still confused, but somehow what I can bet like this, this kind of webinar, and then it's remind me that, you know, uh, you know, we, you know, it's it's worth it. You know, you know we 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 find million way for protest. We we will find, you know, million way of resilient. You know, that is somehow we met each other. I'm really like, I'm really happy to meet with you, Wale. You know how I I learn a lot from you. Like kind of, you're resilient. You know, you're very senior <laughs> resilient. So <laughs> very senior. So this is how we got the inspiration. Yeah, I I think that's how we get the, uh, like like approve you know how much our you know like how much how can you know how much we can we can be resilient you know that's that that's helped a lot yeah thank you so much thank you so much for inviting me this webinar oh bless you yeah, yeah. Thank, and you. thank you very much jane for the the facilitation of this webinar thank you very much walid and lara you know best thing is to wake up every morning knowing that uh, I will be inspired by someone <laughs> and today I was inspired by both of you and it's really amazing and I think it's one of the best things of working for gay education is that we know that every morning we will wake up and be inspired by some story by someone and it's really great to see this and I can only thank you and uh, for the inspiration that you give me but also thank you for the resilience and the work that will for sure affect much, much more people than we can imagine. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pedro. And uh, Charlotte, could you put Gordon's comment up about education and films like Sea of Hope is like a seed that when watered with knowledge and experience grows into true wisdom? I think that's a beautiful, um, very quotes nice. thank, you. thank you gordon i don't know you gordon but thank you for that and i think that's quite a good place to finish and um that yes let's hope that we've watered some seeds and more seeds will grow and we'll connect more with using creativity um, and video for social change in a way that is telling stories from a place of authenticity and healing yeah So thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think we can close now. And yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Become part of the change towards a regenerative future.
Our aim is to promote self-empowerment and educate our course participants about regeneration so that people all over the world can redesign their communities. Look deeper inside our programs and courses to find your way within your community to transform the world. Sustainability is at the heart of all of our courses and projects. Sustainability